Okay, we have another exciting session coming up. Um, as, as, you, as you noticed, perhaps part of the overview session, uh, Project Olympus is modular. And aside from the server and motherboards that we have collaborated with others, we're also collaborating on expansion boxes. A number of expansion boxes we're going to cover today. The first one is uh, around a flash expansion box that I have, again, the pleasure of introducing Mark, Mark A. Shaw back to the Thank you very much. Um, gosh, if I use the word arm in every other sentence, will people come back in? <laughs> okay. um, thank you guys for being here. So I'll leave. I'm hitting the buttons fast. So um, about three months ago, four months ago, we were at a face-to-face -face with Facebook. And we were discussing Flash expansion, and we said, hey, this is kind of where we think Flash expansion is going. A uh, good friend of mine from Facebook, Chris, Pe Chris Peterson, sat across the table from me and said, you know what? That's exactly where we want to go also. So Microsoft and Facebook have been working together for the last few months, um, kind of defining an expansion Flash storage system. And you're going to notice how heavily, heavily leveraged this is from the Lightning architecture. Um, Facebook, I think, and OCP did a really nice job with Lightning in providing a, a starting point for this, and we're very grateful for that because I think that, that leveraging that is going to speed us to market and give us a reliable solution a lot faster out of the box. Um, so what were the goals with this? Um, talking to our storage people, we wanted a modular 1U PCI expansion chassis. Um, we did not want a 2U box with a motherboard sitting in it that... Uh, and we didn't want that for two reasons. One, we want the option to be able to plug in the server that makes sense. You just saw a number of plethora of servers sitting out here in front of us. So why do I want to tie a specific server to this? It's a storage box and, you know, the workloads, things like that, we want to give flexibility to our partners to choose the, so the solution that makes sense for them. Uh, another reason for wanting it modular was probably selfish on an engineering part, right? Um, in a manufacturing part. It's a lot easier for me to develop a modular solution and take that somewhere and have somebody design that and not have them reliant on, on the motherboard than it is to try and say, well, you've got to use this motherboard. It gives them flexibility in developing it and it gives them flexibility in bringing it to market and getting it through manufacturing. Um, we wanted hot plug PCIe cards. As Marky stood up here and talked about before, we want the ability to deploy these and then to add, hot add at a later date without bringing down the system. Um, the ability to hot remove is nice also, but the, really the main point of it is hot add. We want it cold aisle accessible. Obviously, we don't want to go in the, in the cold aisle or into the hot aisle. And we're starting off with support for M.2. So when you look at this, it's a PCI expansion chassis. We're targeting at M.2, but at the end of the date, this is a by 8 endpoint, right? You're not beholden to M.2. You're not beholden to any particular. You're beholden to whatever you can create within this form factor that utilizes PCI Express by 8. Um, we want it Project Olympus compatible. And really what we're talking about is this is a front cabled solution, right? So if you have the stipulation of a front I.O., then you should be able to easily cable to this. And uh, we want it compatible, so for us, Within Microsoft, we want it compatible with our universal PDU. This is, basically falls in line with everything else Project Olympus. We hot add, we hot remove, we plug into a PMDU. We're not going in the cold aisle, adding cables, subtracting cables. We're doing, able to do everything from the front. And then uh, we want this to be an OCP supported piece of hardware. So we are collaborating with OCP partners, new, several OCP partners. Um, we are adopting OpenBMC for this as the management engine. And we are designing this with OCP in mind. You know, this is going to be readily adaptable to open rack. And the partners, are, the partners that we're working with are ensuring that. So what does it look like? Um, it's key features. If you kind of start from the back of this, this the back of this looks just like a Project Olympus um, chassis. It's got Project Olympus power supply. It has our N plus two fans. 
It, it has our chassis, and I, and I say leverage chassis because as you go forward, the front of face of it obviously has to change. Project Olympus motherboards don't hot swap 16 carriers into them, so we change the front chassis. The key features of it are, if you look at the front, there are two external host cables coming in, both of them PCIe by 16. So this enables us to hook up to a single host with two by 16 ports, or it enables multi-host individuals by 16 ports. There are 16, we're calling them, I'm calling it a storage carrier. It can, these are your PCIe endpoints. So basically we're mounting a, a, a long PCB into a carrier. We are able to hot plug and insert that carrier into the board. What's on that carrier will obviously lead with M.2s, but again, I, I think as the Qualcomm guy put it, it's a sandbox, right? So it's a PCIe by eight endpoint sandbox. Those carriers are going to plug into what we call a paddle board. Now, the paddle board is you don't go out and find naturally existing in nature a PCIe by 8 right angle connector that translates something into this form factor. Right? So what the, the connector itself doesn't exist, so we're kind of putting together a two connector paddle board solution in order to get there, and we'll be working with the industry to see if we can kind of standardize that and make it more, more elegant going forward. Um, and then all of these plug into a PCIe switchboard. On that switchboard are two PCIe switches. These are attaching to the front through some internal cables. All in all, this is very lightning, right? It's just repackaged, whereas lightning is a drawer that you pull out that supports U.2. This is taking the same PCI architecture and it's putting it into a front hot pluggable system, eliminating the drawer and at giving you access to a more of a, a, more of a sandbox for PCI Express endpoints. Kind of a, a brief block diagram of it, and I love it because uh, you know we win later today is going to talk about lightning, and and uh, I want to thank them for um, letting me steal this block diagram a little bit. So you've got two basically two PCIe um, mini SAS HD ports at the front. Those are cabled through internal cables back to a PCIe switchboard. On that switchboard, PCIe by 16 is hitting a uh, an 80 lane switch. That 80 lanes is translating to PCIe by 8 12 lanes. And the, or, sorry, eight lanes, going out to eight M.2 carriers. Now there's basically two of these, right? So in this configuration, I've got two hosts. Each host can access eight M.2s. Within that, there's a BMC AST2520, open BMC, and that's doing all of your telemetry monitoring. And it's also doing all of your management ethernet. Now, the nice thing about when we get into the 80 lane switch is that an 80 lane switch migrates nicely to a 96 lane switch. Same pinout, same compatible, same, uh, same package. So if you want multi-host and you want to enable pooled storage, it's a matter of replacing the 80 lane switch with a 96. We'll have the traces down on the board. You put a 96 lane and now, you know, for the extra cost of the 96 lane switch, you're enabled for multi-host with a 6x16 interlink between the switches. So it just kind of gives a nice migration path. Um, pooled storage is not necessarily in our immediate needs, but from the, you know, as you, as you walk around the OCP floor, you see lots of pooled storage and lots of people who are actually who are implementing it. One other option. Um, some people within the OCP community have discussed the need for management and for being able to update their BMC and having the BMC itself sitting on buy one. So we were going to pay, basically put in resistor load options so that PCIe can access the BMC. Now, this is a, a, a pretty expensive lane of, of PCIe, not something we plan to take um, advantage of, but the option is there for people if that's something that they really value. And there are some people that really value that. Now, if we kind of put this whole box together, and we attach it to a host server. Imagine you've got a host server sitting underneath. You have this expansion box sitting on top of it. Within that host server, we have a PCIe retimer card. And um, again, thank you, Lightning. Um, this is an existing OCP, OCP PCIe card. This whole retimer to switch is something that has been tested, wrung out, um, and is basically ready for us to adopt. All we have to do is kind of port it to Windows. Um, from there, we go through a mini SAS, external mini SAS HD cables, a nice short little hop, 
from those mini SAS HD cables, we transition to internal mini SAS HD cables in order to get it back to the switchboard. Um, but again, you know, from a host server standpoint, the key is all you need is two PCIe front accessible I.O. Project Olympus provides that. Again, this is, as I kind of talked in the uh, previous, presen previous presentation, uh, the flexibility of the front I.O. on Mount Olympus and having all that available to us really opens us up for expansion and allows us to adopt technologies. Previous generation, we could have never done this. Management. Um, we're standardized on the BMC, AST 2520. This will be an open BMC. Uh, it's got two gigabits of DDR4. It has uh, redundant flash, so it has kind of the enterprise class, hey, we, if something happens, we have backup flash. And basically this is managed similarly to a Mount Olympus blade. Same Redfish APIs. So we're saying this is talking to a rack manager through gigabit ethernet. So this is managed just like a server box for us. Um, now, one nice thing about uh, Lightning is that uh, they did a nice job of taking into account that when you hook up a server to an expansion, the server needs to have certain information. You know, there, you, there are a lot of pitfalls. For example, you don't want your server booting up first and then your expansion box turning on later because then it never finds it, right? So through USB 2.0 and through I2C, which were added to these as a, uh, as a standard into the, into, the cable arc, into the cable infrastructure, the server is able to gather knowledge of what's above it. It can find out the boot state, it can find out statuses, so it enables the, the uh, enables you know management sideband between the between the head node server and the uh, and the flash expansion box. So that uh, you know when it goes when it boots up, for example, when it when the when the base boots up, it can go off and look and find out that there's an expansion box above it. It can then look and see what its boot status is. Not booted yet? Okay. Well, I'll just wait and I'll wait until that is booted because you don't want to release PCI reset until it is. So there are some pitfalls with expansion that, um, that the cable infrastructure provided by Lightning lets you, lets you overcome in an elegant fashion. Then the BMC is largely, <laughs> we joke about this, Chris and I joke about this, it's largely an I2C delivery vehicle. <laughs> um, you've got 64 I2C endpoints out there on the M.2s. So you see a lot of I squared C coming off the BMC so that we can gather all of that telemetry and pass it along. Um, it's almost, you know, at some point someone's going to create an I squared C acceleration engine. <laughs> really, if there's a place for innovation, it's, uh, it's eliminating I squared C. But uh, some people might not want to hear that. Um, the BMC then also has, is responsible for the fan control. For Mount Olympus, fans are N plus two. Um, we like N plus two. It keeps people out of the hot aisle, and it provides a certain level of reliability. And we will be working on the, uh, we'll be working hard at the thermal solution, and able to spin the fans as slow as humanly possible, keep them alive as human, long as humanly possible. And then the I squared C also is accessible to the power supply, so that we can do online updates of the power supply. From a power perspective, this box is going to be divided up. We divide this up into 19 zones. Um, M.2's, each M.2 carrier stick receives its own zone. So we want the, each one of them electrically isolated from the neighbors. If something were to happen, if someone were to, to come running along and jam, a, jam one of these sticks into it at 800 miles an hour, shorting something, we want to make sure that nothing happens to the neighbors. So each M.2 is isolated into its own hot, into its own power zones, and then the BMC PCIe switchers are isolated into their own power zones. So Again, something goes wrong with one hot pluggable stick, the rest of the, the, the idea is the rest of the si ecosystem stays intact. Now if we look at the front panel, you have two external mini SAS HD 4x4s located on each side. They're strategically located on the sides um, so that when we cable up to it, the cables stay out of the way of hot plugging the, the modules. They're at a pitch of 19 millimeters. Um, this is probably some details that most of you are going like, oh, it doesn't matter. There's some other vendors in here probably that really care about this pitch. Um, that 19 millimeters enables enough cooling to cool 
you know, as we said, we kind of put it up at around 33 watts, but we're, we're uh, cooling comfortably at 33 watts per, per carrier right now, and we expect that to really be able to exceed that. Um, so the 16 storage carriers sit in the middle and cable back. So um, if we look at the carrier, the key features are it supports up to four M.2 modules. It's got a PCIe by eight edge card interface. And basically we run by two interface to each module. So that's how we expand from into four M.2 modules. Now again, what you put in this sandbox can be a by eight endpoint, it can be a by four endpoint. There's really not a limit there. Um, we are electrically scaling this for a maximum of 50 watts. Um, most people look and say, well, what can you do? You know, what can I put 50 watts in a 1U and cool that? Um, you really couldn't load this thing full of 50 watts. But if this were to expand to 2U, if somebody comes along with a form factor larger than 1U that they, that's interesting for this, we can support it at least electrically, and then we just have to change the mechanics. The front is expected to be a toolless latch. And we have a PCB size in there of about 300 millimeters by 38.6. So that size is scaled specifically. We basically, in looking through our, communicating with OCP partners and looking at technologies that are available uh, and then what we're kind of scaling this for, that's kind of the superset of the, what we've identified for um, use cases for this. Kind of a quick block diagram of the carrier itself. It's a very simple, the carrier is not intended to be complex. There's no PCI switches on it. It's simply four lanes of by two to four M.2 modules. There's an I squared C switch on it so that you can get telemetry from each module. And then there's 3.3 volt regulator because M.2s run off of 3.3 volts. Now, I didn't go into some details like uh, front LEDs and things like that. Those are kind of details that we're working out as we go along. The block diagram, the switch, it's the carrier itself is not a complicated piece of, of material. Now we talk about the concept of the paddle board. Um, basically, you're having to do a, a right angle to this. And there's not a connector that exists to do that. And so we were kind of constrained by two things. One was that right angle, and the other was a 1U height. Um, it really limits our connector selections 0.8 millimeters is too tall in 1U to support 1.8, so we're having to go down into 0.6 millimeter range for, for connectors. Um, the other thing is, by doing it this way, it's a, it's a non-air blocking connector. Um, and I like the paddleboard because as we're in this phase in which there's not yet an industry standard wrapped around this, and we are trying to be clear, we are trying to intercept with industry standards on this. We are communicating with, with with industry standard bodies, and there are there is work going on in this area, and we are un, you know we're in that position where when we launch this, we'll be ahead of that. So we are monitoring that very closely, and we're planning and targeting to intercept with that. But the nice thing about the paddle board, and I mean, I'm kind of glad that there's not a connector that exists, right? Because then that lets us have a sandbox where if somebody comes along with something that, if the if the industry standard evolves such that we're not quite right, I only have to change one connector on this paddle board. I don't have to redo my system. I don't have to redo my switchboard. So I've got the flexibility to make changes late and still accommodate you know, varying solutions. Um, now the big challenge for all this is going to be the mechanical alignment. I'm plugging a foot long mechanical piece into a connector that's a foot away from where its latching mechanism is and I've got to be very precise about that. So when we talk about the risks and the challenges with design, Electrically, lightning has blazed the trail. We feel really comfortable with this solution electrically. Where I think the innovation is going to be is going to be on the mechanical side. And that's where, uh, you know, when we get that right, this is going to be a really nice, nice solution. So talking about OCP support, um, obviously, we clearly, I've mentioned lightning about 50 times. Um, but I'm getting a dollar per mention, so it's OK. Um, OCP reuse, so pictured up there is an OCP retimer card. This is the same retimer card used in Lightning. Um, great, it's existed. I don't, have to, I don't have to recreate the wheel on that. 
Um, that card is already proven interfacing to the PCI switches we have. Great, I don't have to deal with that. Um, we will be using AST2520 with OpenBMC. And I want to emphasize that as we're going along with this, working closely with Facebook, we are ensuring that this is adaptable readily into the OCP ecosystem. If you think about, you know, kind of the tenets of what, uh, what OpenRack and what um, the w Windows Cloud Server rack looks like, you've got front I.O., you've got rear power. You put the connect power connectors in the right place, you put the um, fan cables in the right place, and a motherboard, a 19-inch, something that fits in a 19-inch rack for us, easily fits into a 21-inch rack and is, and is uh, adoptable by OpenRack. That's it. That's all the slides I have. Again, I just kind of briefly want to, I want to thank Chris Peterson. Chris has been, I love it, I just love embarrassing him. Um, but Chris has been very instrumental in helping us in, in, uh, in getting us to where it's at today. We do have, we do have some time for questions. Uh, what's the length of the M.2 module that you're using? So we had length to the, oh, so 110 millimeter. So we pretty much are standing on, on the highest density, which is the 110 millimeter M.2. Mm -hmm. Now, again, there's, no, there's nothing to preclude other lengths because they're shorter. Yes. Um, hi. Uh, hi. You mentioned you use uh, OpenBMC, but yes. the, the previous talk, the server guy used like a you know, standard AMI BIOS. So I don't know how can they work together? So th there's, a, there's a bit of delineation yet, right? <laughs> so um, massive, you know, large servers where, where the management requirements are, are heavier are still in the process of migrating, right? So you'll see, you see AMI pretty prevalent across this, the servers. The newer, smaller managed management problems are migrating to be, are, are more readily migrating to BMC. So when you look at our JBOT offering, 20, AST 2520 with OpenBMC, this FX, what we call FX16 um, offering is migrated to, to OpenBMC. It's there easily, there. We, can, we, can, we, can, we can chew those off at this time. But the other ones, since those kind of had to start a year ago, aren't, aren't yet migrating. So that's something we'll, you know, we evaluate for future and as, a, as, a, as it becomes more mature, it would be, would be more easily for us to adopt. <coughs> Modularity will help here too, because <laughs> and both of them are connected to the rack manager. So as long as the rack manager can speak both languages, it just works. So, oh, you mentioned the telemetry. We're able to check the telemetry of the uh, M.2. Mm -hmm. What's the granularity? I mean, do you just check for basic attributes or? Uh, basic attributes. Really, temperature is the primary one. Over here. You're like Monty Hall. Uh, you are planning for a cross two interconnect to each M.2 within the carrier card? Yes. Um, uh, so if the M.2 can provide a cross four performance, read performance, then you will sacrifice that? So, y yes. So we are sacrificing by four performance to by two. But, um, you know, nothing, if, you, if you want the performance of, M, of by four, there is nothing to stop you from putting two M.2s on there. For us, it's more, about, you know, it's more about volume than it is about performance. Now, there's a, a minimum performance ceiling, right? But you know, in today's terms, um, running NVMe over PCIe is so light years ahead of others. And very soon, we expect the rest of the community to help go to Gen 4 PCIe. So. <laughs> Come on, guys, giddy up. Okay. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.